All right, so my name is Abby Zarnecki. I am the Angler Education Coordinator for the Southern Region. Um, and Nicole Haddad is our Conservation Aid and Volunteer Coordinator for the Southern Region as well. So our well, we'll show you the whole area. Um, and it looks like uh, we have a few times a year and never before. So not all over the experience. So perfect. That's kind of how I geared this one for you. So yeah, if you have the e-regulations that Nicole shared with you in the chat, you can download the download those um, in the PowerPoint. We do go through a few pages, so you don't have to have them downloaded. It's just if you need more information. Um, so we print a fishing guide every year, and in that you find the fish, uh, information about bodies of water. Um, our fishable waters map is in that now with the fish in each water. It also has the record guide. Um, so it lists all the record fish in the back. And if you catch like a catfish over 10 pounds, it's considered a record in the state. It's not the biggest record, but it's still a record fish and you can get an awesome certificate for that. Um, so the fishing guide has everything. So do recommend downloading it to your phone, um, eventually going to the office and getting one. Um, we don't know when the office will be open to get printed publications or anything like that yet. Um, we will continue doing webinars for a long, long time. There is a survey afterwards for you to answer if you do want to do, want me to do more of these. Um, also our other angler educator, or sorry, um, outdoor educators have all kinds of different talks on fish and wildlife. Um, so we do recommend going to endowlicensing.com before you go fishing, and then you can just screenshot it and save it to your phone or download it. Um, I'm more than willing to help anyone get their fishing license. Don't want our website or any technical issues to ever hold you up. So feel free to email me. And um, I left my name as my email address if you need help in the future. So please write that down and ask me questions about anything fish uh, related. I also help, um, we all cross train across uh, conservation education. So, you know, hunting, wildlife, urban wildlife, all that fun stuff. Um, if you have any youth with you, 12 and older will need a 12 to 17 will need a youth junior license. And then under that, you, they do not. But for them to catch a full limit, they do have to be with a Nevada resident. We'll go into more specifics if you guys want in a bit. Um, also, make sure you know what your limits are for that water so that you don't get in trouble for going over your limit. An example is three fish. Sorry, that's. Uh, trout in the fall is mainly all you'll catch. Right now it's all catfish and bluegill, but it'll only be three fish. Bluegill count as a sport fish as well. So any of the urban ponds, because they are smaller populations, um, it's only three fish total per angler, and then five trout in most of the rural waters. So I'll have to retype that. Uh, so this is our southern region. This is my expertise, and I uh, Nicole and I both grew up in Southern Nevada, actually in the Las Vegas and Henderson areas. Um, so our Southern region is Tonopah here in the Northwest, goes up and around. Uh, this is Kirch, Wild, or over here is Kirch Wildlife Management Area. That was it. And then some streams, and then back over um, here is Eagle Valley. I have the chat box open on top of the map. Um, over here is uh, Eagle Valley and Echo Canyon. Great crappie fishing, by the way. Um, trout, bass, and that's outside Pioch. And that's about three and a half hour drive. And that includes a rest, restroom break, a snack break. And I usually get gas there just so that I don't have to get gas until I get back there. So kind of like my midway stop for all of it. Um, and then we come back down to um, Lake Mead here. And so you can see the Nevada line goes all the way down here. So you can fish anywhere on these short shared waters where you have Nevada to Arizona. As long as Nevada is touching 
these shared waters you can fish in there. And then this is the Overton Arm, which has great crappie, actually. Um, so you can get to it um, up and down from uh, Logandale is through here. And so you can take the back way down to the Overton Arm or from the Las Vegas, which is Lake Mead Boulevard on the east side of town. And then come up here and um, Echo Bay is still open and there are some side roads. I don't know if you need four wheel drive as soon as I'm allowed to do field work. That is one of my areas to uh, do some research on if it's um, like a, how do I say it? Like someone made the road or if like it's a Lake Mead approved road. Um, I'm hoping to be able to do smaller classes for bass, crappie, bluegill, um, all through this area as well. So the water's a little bit warmer because it's a little shallower. So that's why we have a decent and better population. Honestly, the crappie have definitely come back in the last few years than they have been in the past. Um, even the government wash has bluegill and um, so government wash comes in right here and you can get bluegill, um, tilapia even. Um, so there's actually some really great tilapia beds in here and there's no limit on them. All right, so Southern region and then I'll get into more specifics on where we can find more bluegill. Um, Riley, thanks for joining. It's a small group of us today, Riley and friend. Um, if you guys want to use the chat box or Q and A box, uh, feel free to type in your questions, anything fish, fishing waters related. And then um, also, um, if you have a question and want to talk, uh, just raise your hand and let us know. All right, so this is from our website. What you can do is uh, go to the fish up top. There's a hunt fish boat. Go to the fish tab and go to um, where to fish actually. So you click on where to fish. And you have two options, um, search by species or search by body of water. So we're going to search by species because we're mainly talking about bluegill. And here's all the species that throughout the state. So you can see some more trout species that we have more up north. So if we click on bluegill, it lists most of the bodies of water of bluegill. So fun secret fact, um, we are redoing the website, which means all this will be updated and corrected. And I just talked to one of our technology specialists and um, she said to start making a list and uh, a spreadsheet <laughs> and they're going to start going through and fixing all these. So if you look on here, uh, Veterans Memorial Park isn't listed in Boulder City and that's a great little fun spot to take the grandkids or kids, um, your kids, friends, kids, um, the bluegill and a few green sunfish got mixed in there and uh, they're usually pretty small, but it's really, really fun for the kids. And same with Lorenzi Park, which is on here. And Sunset Park is hit or miss. I have seen some lately. Um, and then Nicole helps, with the, helps me with the fishing report. And so she's been uh, doing a lot of research on Lake Mead and Mojave and has seen the bluegill in Government Wash and um, so on our map, we're also fixing this one up. It's our Google Interactive Fishable Waters map. It is pretty good. It just goes over more about the water itself instead of all the specifics. Um, but if you click on the Google map, um, it sends you right to it. So on your desktop, you can literally click on it and it's interactive and you can stay on the page too and it'll be more interactive. But on the mobile device, um, it doesn't really switch over. So I definitely recommend looking this up if you want to on a laptop. And so then this will list some waters that have bluegill. So this is actually pretty accurate. So north of Cottonwood Cove, you have some bluegill. 
here's Overton Arm, but it lists Lake Mead. So Lake Mead's listed for South Cove for some reason, which how I found out I get to help with the Excel spreadsheet now. And then these are all the urban ponds. Um, Mesquite also gets some stockings, but pretty limited because their fishing demand's not as high. Um, and then that's pretty much it for bluegill. It's pretty much here and down. Definitely closer to the Vegas Valley. And then you can come over here and double check. So um, we had something happen with this last printing. So this is an example from 2020's fishing guide. But if you go to 2019, it's actually a little bit better. And you can uh, Google it and it still comes up. And I do recommend saving the 2019 fishing guide. It's probably our best one. Um, the funny thing here is that they said that we had crappie at Veterans Memorial Park and we don't. Um, if anything, there's been some rumors of bass that have appeared. Unfortunately, it's not the it's not a good bass habitat. And um, the bass that was in there was only like six inches. Um, so it's definitely rainbow and catfish because that's what we stock. And then there are bluegill that we do stock um, every so often. So just found out yesterday and we we're allowed to talk about it now and just found out today. Um, they did stock some bluegill out at Floydland Park and they have been reproducing really well over the years too. So I definitely recommend uh, bluegill, fish bluegill fishing out at Floydland Park. Um, and that's up here and you can see all the different options. And I uh, saw some awesome pictures online yesterday of kids really happy with their catches and they were all uh, good fish eaten size. So, um, so yeah, really good. Just freshly stocked. So from a really nice farm uh, that we've used, I think for like 10 years out of Arizona. So on, um, on these two pages in the fishing guide, page 20 and 21, you can get a little description of all the fish. It is in smaller print, so we could try to squeeze some on here. And up in the top corners are friend the bluegill. So we click on the bluegill. There we go. And we have the description zoomed in on it for you guys. Um, so especially right now, it's pretty awesome. April to May, you've seen the bluegill get that bright blue, literally bright, bright blue gill, just like a ruddy duck gets in the spring, um, their mating color. So hence their real name of the bluegill, but they also have the operculum on the side, the dark little spot there. Um, they can get pretty big. Oh, I have the picture saved if you want to see one from a Veterans Memorial Park that my father-in-law caught a couple of years ago. Um, I did email it to myself. And then, um, so they can get about this big out here. I have seen some pretty big ones. And definitely more in the southern region. And so they are saying that there are some, they haven't stocked bluegill a lot lately, but um, there are some ponds in the northwest around Reno. Um, same thing to fish with. To, for family fishing. So bluegill is um, a conservation managed fish, mainly for recreation is why we stock it, regulate it, um, why they're so fun and popular to catch, right? Um, it's also the most distributed and popular because there's so many, especially in the South, um, Midwest, um, and then they do get seven to 16 inches. So yeah, that's a, it'd be even there. So I haven't seen one that big yet. And zero to five pounds. So that would be a pretty big one. And um, we do do creole census surveys. So we do have some of our biologists, um, mainly the ones right out of college that go out there and check the waters and uh, check their habitat. So usually you can see them spawning in the shallows and then um, see what people are catching and see if we need, if people still want us to keep or uh, stocking them. So bluegill will eat 
everything. Insects, larvae, small little um, crustaceans. So they'll even eat, try to eat little quagga mussels in Lake Mead. And of course, worms of all sizes and shapes. Um, I liked this awesome picture. He was catching a little uh, crankbait. Probably it was this guy was trying to catch a bass, not a bluegill, but he got an awesome bluegill. And then um, these little uh, these little tubes here are awesome, especially red. The main thing I've seen with bluegill out here is they love a little red. You can even take like a little bobber and um, put a little fly on it, like a Griffith's gnat fly, and it's usually um, fuzzy ant looking, but it has a red tail on it, and that'll definitely get all sizes of bluegills attention. And you just want to make sure you get it out there. It's a lighter fly, so it won't sink very well. Um, but if you can get it above one of the big bluegills, then they'll take it. And then obviously this worm's too big for this little guy's mouth, but he tried. So where are they hiding? Um, definitely ponds, streams, and lakes. Streams are not as common as lakes and ponds, and lakes of all sizes. Um, definitely weed beds, you can see them there. If you go out to Floyd Lamb, I think it's the, it's considered the second or third pond. It's by area three off the main road. You can actually see them spawning in the shallows. It's really, really cool. Took some kids out there last year and they just had a blast. Um, they like to hide in some deep pockets right off like an edge and creek channels too, again, so they have that uh, cover. And then um, this right picture here, these are actually, oh, didn't mean to do that one. All right, won't touch anything. Uh, these are made by the biologists. It gives them some shelter and habitat, kind of like their grass. And they'll drop them out into the water a little further and that gives them something to swim around when there's not a lot of uh, vegetation in the water for them, but Floyd Lambs, great vegetation. That's why the bass do well out there too. Um, and shaded piers. So out at Lake Mead, you can, it's a small, small pier, but we have the Hemingway Fishing Pier. And right off the edges, you can see a little bluegill sometimes. Um, actually right about this time, um, hiding under the edges of the pier. So sometimes the kids can just hang a little mealworm or a piece of worm off the edge and play with the bluegill. Um, so here's a screenshot of um, right out of the book of where we have stock. So every year we put what we stocked the year before and pretty much this is what we try to do every single year. We did not list bluegill for sure. And normally we'll stock bluegill for free fishing day, which is um, June 13th is free fishing day. You don't need a fishing license on that day. But I don't know if we're still able to do that this year. Um, but because um, our stockings have been so different and because people haven't been able to get out as much to stock, uh, they actually did just do the bluegill stocking like it says there for April. And for, they did it for May. Um, and so they weren't able to do it for April. And then we'll do channel catfish here and I'm hoping a couple weeks, but can't guarantee anything. All right. So Nicole made this bluegill hotspot sheet. And um, so we have the urban ponds that we talked about, Lake Mead, Government Wash and Echo Bay. So you can get crappie or bluegill. And then Lake Mojave, Cottonwood Cove. Um, so yeah, they have some awesome coves north and south of Cottonwood Cove. And so you'll definitely, those are the places to check for bass, bluegill, and all that fun stuff. They have a lot of great drop-offs and um, vegeta aquatic vegetation that they can hide in kind of in the shallower, warmer waters. Uh, Fish Brain is definitely the app to try to pinpoint where they're at and when they're fishing and um, check our fishing report. We type up as much information as we can find out there and put it in the fishing report. So our first one should be going out this weekend in the review journal and hopefully we can edit it to the um, 
to our website too. So right under fishing, you'll have these up top. So you click on fishing report and then southern region for us for bluegill. Also any other fish that you may want. And again, feel free if a question pops up, type it in or raise your hand. Um, also, I want to tell you guys about one more app I found that actually helped with, especially since we have all these wins going on. We just did a podcast yesterday and I found fishing forecast and it'll list the winds. It'll um, give you the sunrise and sunset. So with the full moon coming, the fish are going to definitely be feeding late, especially these warm water species like catfish and striped bass and bluegill are all going to be uh, feeding later when the moon is up. So definitely double check the moon, sunrise, sunset as well. And uh, sunrise and sunset is just your best time fishing and that way you don't get burned up in the heat either. All right, so yeah, check fish brain. That'll show you what other guys have caught, where they've caught it and all that fun stuff. Um, while you're out, I just wanted to throw in some of the endangered species. If you go to Lake Mead or Lake Mojave or Desert Shores is uh, one of our nurseries for razorback suckers, humpback chubs, and bony tail chubs. So these are what they look like. If you catch them, let us know and put them right back in the water. Um, if they swallow your hook, cut the line down as low as you can and leave the hook. That way you don't accidentally rip it out. Because if there's blood, that's, it's pretty bad gash and they might not make it. They're pretty sensitive fish. But uh, they're one of our very endangered species. They're the aquatic version of a desert tortoise to us. So um, just be cautious that, they're, that they are out there. It's not a carp, it's not a catfish. It's a, probably a razorback sucker out of Willow Beach. <laughs> And recreate responsibly. Um, this was last year with a group that we brought out from Hispanic Access Foundation. Um, we had 50 people fishing out at Willow Beach. That was a lot. But if you don't know people or if you're new to fishing, obviously that's not the most comfortable. So give yourself some room. Um, if you have any questions on where to find some space, let me. I'll let you know what I've seen and heard. I'm literally on these pages all the time checking on YouTube, seeing what the guys are catching, where they're going to find some personal space and get out on their kayak or anything like that. Um, this picture over here is Lake Mead. Um, it's a very small pier again, but there is some great fishing to the left and right of there with some points. And those points will be really great to um, cast out into. Just watch for boats in that section. And then city ponds are a great, great option. And you can see the distance between all of the anglers here. And this is one of our junior instructors from the Boulder City Bass Club helping a new little girl uh, fish. Make sure you wash your hands. Uh, highly recommend soap and water. The alcohol is not good for your fishing line and will just make it break and tear. And so if you get that really big fish, it's going to um, break your line, honestly. So um, definitely soap and water is recommended instead of hand sanitizer, but if you have to, just be conscious of that, that they are dry before you touch your fishing line. Um, and yeah, practice social distancing and avoid the crowds. Find a new location. So be prepared when you go out and about. You'll, you already know to have your fishing license bring a garbage bag, um, grocery bag, any sort of bag to pack out your garbage. Sometimes I just stick mine in my fishing bag until I get back and then throw it away. Um, anything to keep those worms out of the sun. And then uh, check your weather conditions. It's going to be pretty windy all week, especially in the afternoons. The mornings will be calmer. So just watch for that and be careful while you're out and check the fishing guide for us. Um, if you take any new people fishing or a new person goes out, um, there is a first catch on Take Me Fishing or Let Me Know and we'll get you and or them a certificate for catching their first fish. We're very excited to get new anglers out. Thank you for coming. Here's my contact information. Um, I'm technically off on the weekends. I work 40 hours Monday through Friday, even now. 
I am glued to my computer, so don't worry. Feel free to email me a call if you need to, if that's easier. Um, my messages go to the office, so I'm not too sure if they're going to my, um, if they're forwarding the messages to my phone with me, so an email is definitely better. And um, yeah, we just got the okay to send everybody fishing. How many species of fish are there? Oh my goodness, so many. Uh, for us in our southern region, um, for the southern region of Nevada, so the sec lower half, we have 14 species that are our main focus. We do have a bunch of little ones and um, there is an awesome native fish poster that we have of 41 fish. We unfortunately don't have all of those now. Um, so I guess actually we would do 41 plus 14, 15. We're looking at 56 fish down here alone. So lots and lots of fishing options. It's just finding them and learning from them. So yeah, if I didn't go into something specific, please let me know. Uh, bluegill are the fish right now, bluegill and then channel catfish. And on Lake Mead, striped bass, but it's gonna be more at night. So definitely be careful if you go out at night, anywhere rural like that. Um, oh, if you guys like catfish, there is a limit of 50 bullhead catfish in Heiko. So let me go back to my PowerPoint. So we'll go to that fishable waters map. The black bullhead catfish are in Heiko, which is the Key Pittman Wildlife Management Area. So we go down to where to fish. Search by body of water. Here's our fishable waters map I was talking about. And we're going to go an hour and a half north of Vegas. So here's Vegas, we take I-15 north. We go up here, we go past Alamo. So this is Paranagat, really great wildlife viewing area. So we go a little further, we make a stop in Alamo or Ash Springs. They have good little snack food too. And um, we take the slight left turn here and go up to, so it has three names. <laughs> Some people call it Heiko because this little group of homes is called Heiko. It's called Nesbitt Lake, but it is in, oh, let me go up here, there we go. Nesmic Lake is in, <laughs> that's funny, they didn't. So this is something else I'll fix on the new website um, and keep it in wildlife management area, but the bull, black bullhead catfish have gotten really ridiculous here and they'd like to try to keep the bass and bluegill population. And because it is a catfish and they're a bottom feeder, um, we just have to get them out as much as possible so we can keep more of a balance of species in there. So there's a limit of 50 black bullhead catfish in Nesbitt Lake and also up north. Keep going on the same 318 north, like you're going to Ely's, what the directions usually say. Zoom out a little bit more. Here we go. Key Pittman Wildlife Management Area. And the um, campground is really rough here. It's open and windy in the afternoons. Um, but there is a camping area if you need to. So um, we never want anyone to drive if they're tired. And this is only two and a half hours north. And um, also on, God, it was Hay Meadows. Um, also another um, limit of 50 black bullhead catfish. So if you like catfish, this is the place to go. How many endangered species are there? Honestly, a lot. Um, I actually took the map out of this presentation. We have a big problem here with springs drying up. So a lot of the pool fish um, are really hard to um, sustain, like their habitat's just always changing as we, the springs start drying up underneath. Um, and are the fish safe to eat here? Yes. Um, so with that, we do have uh, over here, fish consumption safety, since you brought it up. And it says where there's high mercury in the fish. 
Also, UNLV does studies uh, with the Southern Nevada Health District on the water coming into Lake Mead at Government Wash. And if there was a safety concern with the water, the fish also wouldn't uh, breed and it would actually be bad fishing. Um, and a, a couple classes I had a little while ago, you can actually, um, I learned exactly that you can go to in their websites and find out what is in the water. So different uh, water intakes throughout the valley actually have different minerals and metals found in the water. Um, so this one's mainly for Cummins Lake. Um, has mercury in it, and that's up near Ely, so that's a little further north of Kerch. Um, oh, and then when Lake Mead, like in August, well, July to August, five years ago was when we had that big algae bloom where everything turns green. Um, it, it's a uh, cyanobacteria, and uh, mainly it's bad for, it's really rough on the pets for some reason, so if they, accidentally jump off your boat and jump into a big pile of green make sure they go home and rinse off right away and same with you and sometimes um, there's little snails in that green plant matter and that's what causes that swimmer's itch so just make sure you rinse off really good um, nice warm water clear your skin soap and water um, if you have a half pin to um, accidentally swim in an algae bloom or anything like that but Honestly, I went out there last year um, with my friend's boat and it was, i never saw one the whole time. And that was in June or July. So sometimes in August, it comes out just because of the constant heat right before the end of the summer. So just something to watch for. Good questions, thank you. Now, thank you all for coming. Feel free to leave whenever. Um, if you're done with questions, feel free to email me. Thank, yeah. Thanks again for coming. <laughs>